What's going on, guys? My my guest today, you may know him as executive producer of nine-time Emmy winning show, Chicks Creek. Um, he's also responsible for putting the kids back in the hall in 2022. And now he's working on a new show uh, for CW that is already getting laughs and wave, raving reviews over in Canada. I'm talking about Andrew Barnsley. How are you doing today? Oh man, I'm good. Thank you so much. It's it's fun to to hear those uh, those credits listed. It's been a it's been a fun few years for me. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, what does that feel like to 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 be able to pull something from another like a whole another area and then bring it into the U.S.? What does that feel like? It like it's a really, it's still a very surprising feeling. I certainly experienced it on. Shit's Creek, and to be able to do it again with with Son of a Critch, uh, you know, when you start shows like this, that's never really kind of the goal. The goal is to find a, an audience domestically and to make sure that you're telling authentic stories and you're 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 representing things the the right way and responsibly. But all of a sudden, when you start to get traction and you start to feel momentum build, and you start to get get calls from people outside of your own country it's pretty special and it's pretty it's it just feels good and you I remind everybody on the show just to to take a time to just reflect on how how important it is and how special it is and how great it is that our hard work is just reaching a broader audience yeah and I want to I want to start by one thing by saying you've been involved with two shows that have probably two of the creative most creative names. It's a nice flip, a nice little spin. Talk to us about the title of this show, uh, "Son of a Critch." I know it, it comes from a book uh, for from the lead character Mark, um, but what, why why choose that? Why keep that same name for the show going forward? Yeah, that's that's a good question. I mean, Mark. So it did start. Mark Mark is a uh, almost he's a household name in Canada. He's known as a very important comedic voice. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, he, he's on the longest running political satire show in Canada, and people know who he is. He's very well respected. Uh, he's had an extraordinary career uh, growing up in the province of Newfoundland and Labrador, which is you know Newfoundland is this remote island in the the North Atlantic, mm -hmm. uh, and he's he's just become a very Sort of significant and meaningful voice that politicians listen to, uh, that that titans of industry listen to, that and that you know uh, everyday Canadians listen to, yeah, yeah. and he felt you know a few years ago that it was time to write his first memoir, and it uh, you know he happened to have a, a last name that rhymes with with a word, <laughs> and so he felt that that son of a critch was the appropriate title, and and when we came on board as, a, as producers and as a production company, it's it's like, let's go for it. And we knew that uh, sort of the proximity to uh, Schitt's Creek, there was sort of, it was kind of funny that, that those two were aligned in that way. Um, but what's interesting is we never, we never got any pushback on the name. People, yeah, yeah. people bought into it right away. And um, Mark, Mark gets some mileage out of that. He, he's since released a second, uh, memoir that that gets sort of past his teenage years, and it's mm -hmm. called um, uh, "An Embarrassment of Critches." So any <laughs> any pun we can come up with, we're we're down for. Now, is there any kind of pressure now for the next project where you're like that name has got to be just as clever or in the same kind of tone? It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Like I try not to put that pressure on me, but I definitely feel it. Yeah. So and again, like we said, this is based on the memoirs of Mark um, Critch. What is it about his overall story that is just so compelling to you that you feel as though the U.S. is ready for it or even would want it? Yeah, the thing that's uh, we thankfully we've been on air on the CW for a few weeks now, and we are we have noticed that people are watching it and it is connecting with audiences. And what's interesting about that is the show is very specific in nature. It, it not only does it take place, like I mentioned in this remote island in the North Atlantic, it takes place in the mid eighties. So it's like specificity on top of specificity. So you're getting like narrow and narrow in terms of who can, who can relate to it. But what's fascinating has been so fascinating is that it's almost counterintuitive. The more specific you get, the more, 
more the universal themes come out of it. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I've spoken with people all over Canada and now, now in the U S as well. And they're like, Oh, I remember that Walkman. I remember that song. I remember getting bullied. I remember the first time I walked up the stairs to, to my school. I remember, you know, trying this type of food for the first time. And it's so, it's become so relatable. And not only that, it's, it's a story of three generations living in a, in a, in the same house. And this, you know, this is, was Mark's life. And um, so you, you're speaking to three generations as well. So it's like, it's, it's kind of counterintuitive, but at the same time, the, 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 the reach has become really broad. And it's so nice to see that that's actually happening in the U S as well. Yeah, and, and nostalgia is universal. I would agree. Yeah, uh, nostalgia. Nostalgia. The, the show feels a lot like uh, like the Goldbergs in that sense, you know, with the narrations and, and everything like that. Um, but there are some really th fun things in this show that maybe some of us would not even be even think of. Like, I don't want to give away too much, but there is this one fun, funny moment about the obsession of cucumbers. <laughs> What I want to know is, are these true things in the Great North? <laughs> they are true. They are true. And so what's fat like that cucumber story and 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 this this is we, you know, Mark lived it. I actually spent a lot of time in Newfoundland as a kid growing up. Mm -hmm. And what happened was that was an economy that was based on the fisheries. It was based on cod fish, the, the cod fishery. And the the Canadian government put a uh a moratorium on fishing in Newfoundland. Land and it just collapsed the economy. And so the, the governments were just trying to figure out how do you bring it back? And there were all kinds of um, um, sort of strategic plays and initiatives that went into it. And the truth is cucumbers, growing cucumbers and greenhouses, hydroponic cucumbers and greenhouses was a thing that the government invested heavily in in Newfoundland in the 80s. And I remember as a kid driving by the the greenhouse and at night it lit up the sky because they could i think it was something like they could grow a cucumber in something like 11 days because the, the way it was done and they're like <laughs> the the uh the whole economy like cucumbers weren't a thing in newfoundland yeah, yeah but they were in that moment of time and the funny thing is so there was such and you'll see it in that episode where government put out literature this is how you cook with cucumbers these are recipes with cucumbers and the math was the cost of making one cucumber in Newfoundland at the time was something like $11 or something like that. Cause so much wow. money, had been put into it, but wow. they couldn't sell them for that much. Right. So anyway, yeah, these are all, all these are all true stories. These are, are versions of, of true stories that, that Mark experienced as, as a child growing up in Newfoundland. That is literally one of my favorite episodes. It's hilarious. It's just so funny to see the, the fascination over something that's just so everywhere here in the U.S. Yeah, <laughs> I have one, and one so exotic. Really cool. um, the show was built up of a lot of colorful characters. Um, you got Malcolm McDowell in this, like legendary, Clockwork Orange. What, 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 what is it like to get him involved in something this funny and, and, and hilarious like what was that like i mean we are so lucky to be working with malcolm he is a true legend and uh the the truth is he loves it he loves um you know when when we've been filming in newfoundland he loves the 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 community the culture he gets involved in it but what really sold him was the script it was you know it was such a long shot for us to go have our casting directors reach out to Malcolm uh, but they were like let's just get a script in front of him see what he thinks and he read the script and was like I need to be involved in this show this is something that that uh, speaks to me it's funny the the team is in place let's do it and it's funny uh, uh, just a couple of weeks ago after the, the day we were launching on the CW he called me and he said Andrew it's like I, I feel I finally have a TV show people are going to watch so he's yeah, so yeah. proud of it. He loves it. I'm telling you, the, the chemistry between him and Benjamin, who plays young Mark, is pure heart. Like, it's it's the reason I keep coming back to it, and I'm sure audiences feel the same way. Um, I, I, Andrew, I want to thank you for, you know, taking the time to talk with me. Um, Son of a Critch, guys, it's on CW every Monday at 8 p.m. It's hilarious. It's heartfelt. It's it's a fun show. I, I'm enjoying it, and I can't wait to see how, how it wraps up until the next season. 
Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for the time here. I appreciate it.